Don't call me ma'am. No, I'm kidding. I won't. That wasn't really in my I'm counting. I watch like uh, people's court and they hate that. <laughs> Yeah. Are we live? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Natumians. This is the zoning administrator meeting. And since it's 1030, I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, were these draft minutes? Uh, uh, item number two is approval of draft minutes. I think we approved those last time. I'm not sure. I don't know if that oh. is the same as this. Okay, so this got is it. your agenda today. Those are just our got it. We're talking here. Okay. So item number two is approval of minutes for the November 2nd, uh, 2023 meeting. Um, I hereby approve those minutes as drafted. No changes. And this is a time when a person may address matters not listed on the agenda, but which um, are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Is there anybody wishing to make a comment on an item not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to item four, which is zoning administrator business. And I'll just state the statement of purpose, the zoning administrator is appointed by the director of the planning and economic development department and has a responsibility and authority to conduct public meetings and hearings and to act on applications for minor or reduced review authority projects or entitlements. A determination or decision by the zoning administrator may be appealed to the appeal body, including the design review board, cultural heritage board, planning commission or city council as applicable to the decision. Since there are no zoning administrator reports and no consent items, we'll move to item six, scheduled items. Uh, the first item is item 6.1, Tipsy Taco. And Ms. B uh, Planner Beesla will be, oh no. Th that item has been, um, the ZA was informed that that item has been continued to a date uncertain. Is that correct? Yes. So that meeting, um, that item will be re-noticed to a future uh, ZA meeting date and will not be heard today. So moving item, moving on to item 6.2, uh, Planner Bisla. Yes. Do you know how I can present this? Oh, I have to share it. Oh, you shared it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. Um, my name is Planner Bisla, and the project before you today is an application for dish antennas located at 2899 Dow Drive. It's an application for both a minor use permit as well as minor design review. Um, the project proposes three antenna cabinets, um, which will each include one antenna and two radio remote remote radio heads um, in each cabinet as well as a ground floor uh, equipment cabinet each of the antennas will be screened by uh, red domes that will be painted to match the existing building um, and the ground floor equipment cabinet will be screened by a fence the project is located uh, in the industrial light industrial zoning district, as well as the light industrial uh, general plan. It is it has a light industrial general plan land use designation. Um, the the project meets all of the findings. The staff is able to make all of the required findings for a conditional use permit, and that uh, the proposed equipment will be screened, and none of the antennas or equipment will be visible to the public. 
and the project has been conditioned uh, to implement the proper measures that have been listed in the electromagnetic energy report. Staff is also able to make all of the required findings for design review. Um, the antennas will be screened from public view with these red domes. So I'm trying to find the, oh, actually. Here you can see the photo simulations um, that the, the antennas on the rooftop will be screened to match the existing building. Um, and currently the project proposes a chain link fence for the ground level equipment cabinet, but the, uh, the project has now been conditioned to include a more attractive fence design that will match the building. And since then the applicant and the owner uh, have both proposed a corrugated steel design that will match the industrial look of the warehouse building. And will these be the only antennas on the roof? There, yeah, there's three different ones. Three um, different um, operators? No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. got it. Just, just the dish antennas. Three, three different locations on the on the roof, and then the ground floor equipment will be located here. And will the um, fence be painted to match the colors? Or the owner did propose um, paint to match okay. the building. However, it paint over corrugated steel is sometimes not the most durable. Yeah, um, it's so like so. it's staff has left that uh, that option open. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it is subject to over-the-counter design review, so okay. the fence design will be reviewed by planning staff again. Okay. And the project has found, has been found to be in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act, um, both with guideline section 15301 and 15303, as uh, it involves the construction of a small structure at an existing location, or sorry, at an existing structure, um, and will not expand the use. Um, therefore, staff recommends that the zoning administrator approve the minor design review and minor conditional use permit to allow the dish antennas at 2899 Down Drive. Thank you. And I believe the applicant is present to answer any questions. Okay. okay. Um, would the applicant like to say anything or make a presentation or? Uh, Paul Bonnets has raised his hand. I'll okay. allow him to talk. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bonnets, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Good morning. Did that did that work? Yes. Yes. Um. No, I think Noor uh, did uh, a, a great job of explaining the project. It's it's pretty straightforward, and in fact. There was a similar uh, cell wireless facility on this building for many, many years. It was a sprint site that was recently decommissioned and DISH is essentially following a very similar pattern to that, that site that had been there for many, many years. So uh, unless uh, anybody has questions for me, I'll, I'll let what um, the presentation that Noor gave uh, stand um, because I think it pretty much laid it out. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're now taking public comments for item 6.2. Um, this is a time when any person may address matters, not um, may address this item. Um, are there any public comments? Seeing none, um, the, I find that the um, antennas are fairly innocuous, especially from the ground level. Um, I like that they're painted to um, blend in. I like that the fence was upgraded from chain link to something um, more substantial and hopefully more attractive. And uh, because of that, um, I will approve item 6.2, uh, Dish Antennas Planning Project tw uh, at 2899 Dow Drive, PRJ 23-015. Thank you for your presentation. Moving on to item 6.3. Oh, yes. And it is subject to attend. All these items today are subject to a 10 day appeal period. And moving on to item six. 
Any comments? No, I was just saying thank you very much. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Moving on to item 6.3. It's a minor variance at um, 2113 Terrace Way, uh, file number ZV23-001. And we're waiting for the presentation to load. Oh, you got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Just oh, yeah, you did. okay. Okay, we're here. Good morning, Good morning. zoning <laughs> administrator Tunians. Uh, I'm city planner Sheila Walski. I'm bringing forward a minor variance request for an as-built addition that was constructed um, in the side setback at two one one three Terrace Way in Santa Rosa. Um. Again, this project is a request for a variance to allow unpermitted construction um, to remain in the setback, the side setback. The area of unpermitted construction is highlighted on this slide in this plan set in yellow. This is an aerial view of the property at 2113 Terrace Way, and I've placed an orange star on the area of um, the unpermitted construction. This slide provides you with neighborhood context, so you're able to see where this property is located in the Cotting Terrace subdivision. Uh, again, there's an orange star on this property. And this slide shows you the zoning, which is R16, and the general plan land use designation, which is low density residential. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the applicant is requesting a variance to allow unpermitted construction to remain in the side setback, which current zoning development standards require to be at a distance of five feet from the side property line. The applicant purchased this property in 2020 and sub subsequently, and upon submittal of a building permit application, it was noted by city staff that there was a difference in the permitted square footage of the home and that a 146 square foot addition, again, this area in yellow, um, have been added to the property without permits. Based on historical aerial photos, it was determined that this addition was constructed sometime in the mid 1970s, consistent with the existing side setback at the time. The addition is flush with the side setback at four feet, one inch where it began and a maximum of four feet and a half where it meets the rear elevation back here. My cursor is only showing up occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> the applicant is interested in keeping this addition, obtaining the necessary building permits for it, and bringing this part of the structure up to current building code requirements. These are photos of the unpermitted addition, which is at the side and rear of the property. As you can see, the area of the 50-year-old addition was constructed with the same materials as the primary home, and the side yard setback is consistent with the existing permitted structure. This slide shows other properties on this block, which many of which were constructed at side setbacks of less than five feet. And it's a little hard to see this far away, but there are several properties on that block and in the area that were constructed at setbacks of um, less than five feet. Uh, there are several findings that have to be made in order to approve a variance. I'll go through the findings and explain how this project complies with the findings. Number one, there are special circumstances applicable to the property. 
um, so that the strict application of this zoning code denies the property owner privileges enjoyed by other property owners in the vicinity and under identical zoning districts or creates an unnecessary and non self created hardship or unreasonable regulation, which makes it obviously impractical to require compliance with the applicable development standards. Um, first, this was a non self created condition. The addition was constructed approximately 50 years ago prior to the applicant's ownership of the property. And requiring demolition of one foot, or in some cases, one half foot of the structure to comply with the current side yard setback would be impractical. Number two, a non self created hardship peculiar to the subject property does exist by reason of the conditions and that these conditions are not common to all or most of the properties in the immediate area, which are also within the identical zoning district. Again, this addition is a non self created hardship. It was constructed approximately 50 years ago and the current owner is interested in getting this addition permitted and compliant with the California building code standards, as well as having the entirety of the structure insured. While the current zoning code standards require a five foot setback, had the previous owner in the 1970s applied for a building permit for an addition at four foot, it could have been approved and the setback is consistent with the existing side setback of the permitted primary home. The condition is not common to all or most properties in the immediate area because most properties were constructed with reduced side setbacks with building permit approval. Granting the variance, number three, granting the variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right possessed by other properties in the vicinity, which are within the identical zoning district as the subject property. And that a variance, if granted, would not constitute a special privilege to the subject property, which is not held or enjoyed by neighboring properties within the identical zoning district. And the response to that is that many of the homes in this area were constructed with side setbacks of less than five feet. Number four, the variance would not be of substantial detriment to adjacent properties and would not be in conflict with the purposes and intent of this zoning code the general plan, any applicable specific plan, or the public interest or welfare. Um, this property has not had any code enforcement violation complaints against it. Um, this was only brought to the city's attention when the applicant came in to submit building permits and this discrepancy was noted. Uh, the property owner is requesting the variance to legalize and permit an approximately 50 year old addition in order to comply with building code requirements and to allow for future submittal of building permit applications. The proposed project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and has been found to be categorically exempt from further evaluation under CEQA pursuant to section 15301 existing facilities in that the addition will not result in an additional 50% of the floor area of the existing home. Um, notice was sent to occupants within 600 feet of this property. And as of today, there have been no, um, no public comments received on this project and there are no unresolved issues as a result of staff review. And it is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator by resolution approve a minor variance that would allow a primary home addition at a four foot setback at 2113 Terrace Way. That completes my report. If you have any questions, I am available. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Planner Wilson. Uh, we are now taking public comments on, on item 6.3. Is there anyone wishing to make a comment? Please raise your hand. There would be no hands raised. And is the applicant here or here virtually that would and would like to make any remarks? There appears to be no. We have a guest, okay. Mr. Jones. Okay, so I hereby close uh, public comment. Um, what is the um, lot size? Ooh, good question. Um, is it, is it's it, standard oh. for the neighborhood. Let me see if I can pull that up. Is it similar to a small lot? Or? No, if we look here, 
you can see this is I would I would hazard a guess it's probably seven or eight thousand okay. square feet. Got it. Okay. I have that in my project file. Okay. Um, but if we want to go to GIS, we can do that too. Okay. I was just curious if it, the subdivision was constructed like a small lot. Maybe. It was not. Okay. And um, these are this when I was looking through this um, to compare it to the other homes in the neighborhood. It's one of the smallest homes. Okay. It should have been about. Uh, as permitted about 1200 square feet. Okay. So it's one of the smaller homes in this neighborhood, but a similar size lot to the other homes in the neighborhood. Okay. Um, so um, given that um, other properties enjoy a similar setback and the neighbors haven't seem to have an issue um, for over 50 years <laughs> with the addition, um, uh, it, it makes sense. I, I agree with your findings for the variance. Um, and it would it make sense to have them demolish six inches <laughs> of the side of the house, um, given that it's compatible? Um, the addition looks like it blends in with the original house. And as long as they get a building permit, it, it should be safe. And so with that, um, I will be approving item uh, 6.3. Uh, minor variance, zoning code variance, 2113 Terrace Way, file number ZV23-001. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And we'll be moving on to 6.4, item 6.4. Um, Planner McKay is going to load his presentation. Thank you, Zoning Administrator Tumians. Um, let's see. Bring up the elevations and the site plan. My presentation isn't as <laughs> formal. Um, I'll share my screen. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a request for modifications to approved design review um, for Cherry Ranch, which is located at 930 Fresno Avenue. Um, so this project was um, approved for a tentative map, which um, allowed for a small lot subdivision by the Planning Commission on June 9th, 2022. Um, subsequently, the zoning administrator approved design review um, on September 1st, 2022, because um, the project includes single family attached, which requires a minor design review. Um, and then there's a zoning code section that allows for modifications to approve residential projects. Um, some changes can be approved at the staff level, but um, the director can elect to elevate that review to the original review authority if they can't make the findings that the requested changes weren't specifically addressed by the zoning administrator in their review of the original approval. So given that the site plan has been modified to change 22 lots from single family attached to single family detached, um, the director elected to elevate it to the original review authority. Um, so as you can see on this site plan, um, there's quite a few new single family detached, um, which I think ultimately the applicant can speak on this after my presentation, but it creates for a nicer neighborhood um, where people can feel prideful in their units and they don't necessarily share a wall. Um, with another another um, family. So here we have um, some elevations and I appreciate the applicant's flexibility um, specifically on elevation F, color scheme 16 F. The original proposal mm -hmm. um, featured a lot more white and there wasn't the trim around the windows or the trim on the roof line and I, at my uh, 
humble request. They agreed to incorporate the gray from the front door into that trim. And I think ultimately that um, provides for an architectural detail that is similar to the other elevations throughout the neighborhood. Um, and then here is the, uh, rem there are some, like I said, some s remaining single family attached, but um, that's what the elevation looks like for those, which is generally consistent in architectural style and material and color with the single family detached. Um, so overall, the architecture is consistent with um, the community that is the Cherry Ranch subdivision and also consistent with um, the community across the street, um, which is existing single family and medium density, small lot subdivision, residential. Um, the project would be is subject to all the conditions of approval with the original approval by the Planning Commission and the Zoning Administrator. Um, with that includes modified construction hours to mitigate to minimize the potential impact to surrounding residential uses um, related to the construction phase of the project. Um, and then the project is exempt from CEQA because the Cherry Ranch original approval uh, was associated with an addendum to the uh, Sebastopol mm. Road area projects environmental impact report. Mm. And this wouldn't change the intensity because it's not increasing the unit count and it's just separating um, some single family attached to create more single family detached mm -hmm. homes. Um, that said also the, all of the required setbacks are also being maintained except that where it was a zero lot line before, now that will be a three, lot, three uh, foot setback, which is consistent with what was approved um, in other lots in the original tentative map approval. Um, let's see, I think that's mainly everything that I wanted to to get through. And I, I know the applicant is in attendance. Thanks for making the trip. Um, and I think they want to talk about, uh, forgive, me if, forgive me if I'm wrong, but uh, like kind of the vision behind the changes. I think that would be helpful. Yeah, we can move into it. Thank you, Planner McKay. Um, applicant, if you'd like to make any comments on Connor's presentation. Okay. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jacqueline Chan. I'm from DR Horton. We're the builder that's on, going to be on this project. I'm the project manager for the Cherry Ranch um, project. So um, we're just really happy to be here um, for one of our key approvals for this project. And just thank you, Connor, for working with us for the past couple of months to get us to this hearing date. Um, just emails back and forth and scheduling our meeting. We just really appreciate it. Um, so as um, I mentioned, the main um, key, key approval that we are asking for is to add the single family detached, 22 of them, onto um, the current lots that are approved for a attached to that unit. So um, on, on this rendering, if it's, it's on plan, it's the plan four. I don't know if you'd like to look at the single family unit. Mm -hmm. um, that yes, so this will be a okay. single family. The other ones are because there are some lots um, under a regional approval that is also detached, and we will be substituting it with our own architecture. Okay. Yes. So um, by having approval to put these um, single family detached units, it will make our project more financially feasible. Um, based on our market research, we've determined that the buyer preference for this area is for single family detached. And so this approval will allow the project to be built and absorbed by the market mm -hmm. really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, that's the kind of main, main focus of our application. And um, as mentioned, we'll comply with all the condition of, of approvals as originally for this project. We're not change, making any changes also to the originally approved landscape plans. So okay. we we'll retain those. Um, what else is covered? Yeah, and then we'll still be building duets out there. And the square footages will be relatively the same on the, for the duets, uh, or for 
do it from going from duet to single or a family detached? So we, the single family detached we have, it's 18, 1800s. Okay. Foot. So I know that there's a lot of coverage um, okay. that's on the country's approval that will meet it. I don't recall exactly no, what, no, it's the, okay. <laughs> what the original one is. Okay. But we check that and it, it would comply with a lot of coverage. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're not. We're now taking public comments on item six point four. Is there anyone um, wishing to make a comment? Please raise your hand. Seeing no other public comments, I'll. No. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, and with that, I'll close uh, public comment. Um, Planner McKay, is there anything that from the zoning that requires these units to be attached? No. Okay. Um, with that, um, the design looks to be of superior quality. Um, it looks like it would be a great addition to the city, um, the way it's designed. Um, as Connor mentioned, I do like the co color contrast on <laughs> that one elevation. Um, and uh, with that, I will be approving item 6.4. Um, it's... Uh, Public Meeting Cherry Ranch Subdivision Design Review, uh, 930 Fresno Avenue, file number DR23-027. And um, just to let everyone know, um, all of these items are appealable within 10 days. Um, you just have to submit appeal within 10 calendar days. If that calendar day falls on a weekend, it would be the next business day that you could submit an appeal. And with that, um, there are no other items, so I'll be adjourning the meeting. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. Oh, yes. So with the 10-day appeal period, does that mean we wouldn't receive final design review written appear, uh, approval until after that's exhausted? Yes, technically you don't have a full approval until that 10 day appeal period. You could um, at risk apply for your building permit in the meantime. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we are adjourned. Thank you.